Welcome to episode 62 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. In this episode, I sat down with Jonathan Tarico from Pierpoint in Argentina and asked him how he got started in sourcing. It started back in 2000 and 2004. You, and you're going to laugh about this one. I was doing psychic chat. I was part of a company that was answering, you know, the, the messages that you got on your, on your mobile. And then I transitioned into a company uh, named uh, Teletech. I don't, I don't know if they're still up, um, you know, doing just regular customer service uh, type work. And, um, and yeah, I was, I was helping Anthem, Blue Cross and Blue Show for the US. Um, you know, at, at first it was quite of a big thing for me because, you know, talking to people, getting nervous, hand sweaty, <laughs> we know that thing. And, and then it, it came just super easy and, and going out. Um, and then I had a, a friend that was working at Kinexa. Mm -hmm. Kinexa was a big company that now has been acquired by, by IBM. And that's where I started doing like, you know, IT recruiting. Back at Teletech, I was doing customer service and then I transitioned into sort of a position that was uh, helping the back office. It was the, the back office for the main site. And we were doing recruiting, sourcing, uh, you know, finding customer service agents and, and, you know, supervisors that's, but using Talio, which mm -hmm. we all hate. So yeah, that's how I started. And um, I was at Kinexa for about maybe two years doing IT recruiting and a bit of oil and gas. Um, and then uh, I transitioned into Kronos Consulting, which is a big uh, firm in, in Europe, I know. Mm -hmm. I was doing inside sales for them for just for a while. And then I had another friend that was working at Pierpoint. And uh, since then I've, I've been here, I've been for ages, uh, nine years now, it's been a while, <laughs> getting used to it. Yeah, that's me. And, and, and funny enough, um, I know you and I met back in, in Amsterdam and so I did with most of the people that I, you know, I'm a fan of, like Irina and Aaron, Aaron, he is such a great guy and, mm -hmm. and we, we've been chatting for so long and we, we actually met, you know, in Amsterdam for the first time. That was incredible for me. And uh, I don't know who I was telling this about, but I actually, oh yeah, Mark Totrich, I, I actually told him because I shared um, sort of a, a question that came up uh, to me while doing the work, right? And I, I usually keep questions and if I find an interesting candidate, I might just leave that information aside and just build a question and pull it up. So I, I was telling him that initially I got exposed to all the sourcing tricks and things and all the learning material just through the hangouts. I mean, mm -hmm. that was YouTube and, and watching stuff and, you know, just trying stuff out. That was me. Like when I, I I've always been a fan of hacking stuff, like mm -hmm. being, becoming a hacker. So when I found out that you could just, you know, find information about people, uh, that would just blew my mind off, and it's been my my main uh, motor, right? To to keep on finding things. Uh, I'm actually now doing, well, been doing Python for almost uh, two years now. So I'm scraping the web and you know sharing funny stuff with Aaron. Um, I think it was just about two years ago we we built that magic uh, website GitHub, where we're sharing. Uh, get, get up emails at the time and you know that was fun and yeah that's you know pretty much it <laughs> no no so, mystery behind yeah, even i mean even when you started at pierpoint and you le started learning more and more what's been some of the, the the good resources for you to kind of learn from or to follow and like where where did you start the, or, or get the, the start in terms of the knowledge well as far as knowledge my go-to person has always been uh, irina Mm -hmm. I love her work. I've been, you know, I was one of the first people in Latin America subscribing to the Boolean Strings, but the chat. We have a, we had a weekly chat mm -hmm. where everyone was sharing stuff. That's where I first got exposed to, you know, some of the things that other people were doing. Uh, for sure, David. David is a big mentor as well. Uh, Aaron, uh, obviously you, and, and, well, I've read so many books lately. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, Shally's, uh, Jans, and many, many more. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever I have time, I just dedicate myself to mix a little bit of recruiting. I mean, it's, well, not recruiting, sourcing and 
OSINT. I'm yeah. a big fan of OSINT myself. And uh, I know you work a lot with, you know, with North America. Uh, tell me a bit about like, you know, the kind of roles you would normally work on and, and how you, like, being based in Argentina, how you kind of get a picture of if you're in a new market or a new company that you have to work for. Like, what's your process in terms of that? Whereas I think a lot of people are used to either going to the company or at least kind of knowing the area where a lot of what you have to do is, is about looking from, from abroad and think to like, okay, where, where do we get in best here? Well, um, I think recruiting in general, it's the same for every, every industry. It's the same thing. I mean, it's the same process. Mm -hmm. uh, once you learn what you need to find, um, you know, you spend some time doing the appropriate research and like, now, like I've been doing, now I'm actually supporting a big client. It's uh, Juniper Networks. And, and I've had done in the past a little bit of um, you know, networking. I had a little bit of networking background myself. But if I hadn't, then what I do is I get a new position and I just get into you know, pages like, I don't know, Wikipedia and just try and, and understand, okay, so the OSI model, how it works, the different layers. And just work my way back, right? Reverse engineer the, the role. Uh, same goes with, you know, finding a couple of tricks, right? You might go into Indeed and, and use the website as, as a searcher to get the, you know, the competition, the, the, the companies that are hiring for that. So you might get other resources and that, you know, that's how I do it. Um, then you get used to it. And, and obviously talking to candidates, talking to hiring managers, you know, people, human relationships, uh, that's, um, that's a big thing because I'm seeing that lot, lots of people message, right? They message on LinkedIn, they message on Hangouts, you know, right now we, we can use uh, text messages as well. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you get to talk to them, you, know, you, you get a, a smile from them, then that's easy. That's simple. <laughs> that's a big, big trick that I can share uh, for everyone to, to use. And in terms of the kind of sourcing tool stack, I know that you, you like doing your own tools. And, and as you said, actually learning Python is, is a, lot of, a lot of easier with that. But what, what does your sourcing tool stack look like? Um, you know, I've had LinkedIn Recruiter for a while, then it went out. Uh, I've had High 12, which I'm using now again. Uh, I'm a big fan of Amazing Hiring. They have a great, great uh, product. Uh, I'm always trying new things, uh, trying the demos for it, contact out. Um, I've also, I'm actually playing now with a, a new thing that I found uh, that I shared with you the other day, uh, myrobot.works, mm -hmm. which is excellent. You can automate your messaging. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. And then as far as GitHub, uh, well, I've been using the tricks for a while. <laughs> so yeah, I have my own kind of thing and I'm, and I'm planning to, to put a, a live version of, of my old website again. Uh, I know some people liked it, so you know, it's coming up. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and I must not forget people. People is mm -hmm. also a great, a great tool. Obviously being based in, in Buenos Aires and, and Argentina, it's like I've, I've worked with a lot of companies that have either, they, they have support teams there or they have, you know, engineering teams there. Um, for people like me on the, you know, in the other side of the world, but even like other companies as well that are considering um, looking at Buenos Aires as a location, what would we have to think about? Like, what's it like recruiting locally and what's the differences from a kind of sourcing point of view as well? Well, that, that's a lovely question. Um, as far as getting used to, you know, different markets, uh, in my case, I've I can I can say that I've been exposed to the U.S. market just you know, for about nine years. Mm -hmm. So my life has completely changed since then. I run on Pacific Standard Time. Uh, you know, sometimes my my wife, which I have aside, you're not seeing it because she's um, she gets cranky at me because you know I might stay up at night doing the work and then just waking up late. Um, so I just accommodated my entire world to that. As far as getting people here for different markets and, and we, we have really amazing local talent as far mm -hmm. as engineering, as I know. As far as recruiting, recruiting and sourcing as you and I know it, it's a completely different history. It's new to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm 
and I've been thinking of maybe uh, doing kind of a meetup or stuff uh, locally here, maybe for Latin people in Latin America, because I know we have some some uh, fans of the sourcing challenge show in Brazil, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, maybe um, that's something that I have in uh, I have been planning, but you know, it hasn't come to reality yet. But I think there's a lot to learn uh, locally as far as sourcing, right? The the typical sourcing done here is just you know messaging and and praying. Uh, we have local job boards. Um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, and you you touched a little bit about it. Like there there is a community, but it's maybe very very early stages in in terms of actually having well a recruitment, but definitely a sourcing community in in Argentina. Yeah, I mean, most of the people that work with me, people here at Peerpoint, they they're awesome recruiters and sourcers, and they're most of them based in. Argentina and uh, Uruguay, mm -hmm. uh, but as far as you know, how deep they go, and in terms of the you know the, the hacks and you know getting inside of the stuff that you and I like, I don't know how much uh, we might find <laughs> around with that. Um, yeah, I think there's an opportunity. There's a big opportunity for even you know the sourcing summit or uh, SourceCon to, to come down south and something here because you know people don't know much about it <laughs> definitely i know we've been looking at that as well it's like okay I, I think one of it is a bit like europe it's like where do we put it do we you know do you put it in in brazil then yes you're gonna get the brazilians but is everybody gonna travel there and then it, it's a bit about like where geographically i think now would probably be a good time from a kind of yeah an online event to get the people together um but again you have to kind of split with do you do well, it in Spanish and then you're going to get most of LATAM or do you get Brazil in it as well? Yeah, as far as the public, I don't know. Um, as far as companies looking into Buenos Aires for, for you know, talent, mm -hmm. I think one of the good things that we have is that, you know, the talent that we have and the timing, the time difference, there's not much of a, a big, big, huge difference between you and Barcelona and here, uh, me and Buenos Aires. So that's a good point, right? If you're planning to, to ramp up something big, uh, we can support anywhere in the Europe and uh, in the US, it's a little bit larger the difference, but it's still doable. And the other big question for most companies is English. Uh, I don't know how you feel me, but uh, yeah, we, we have some good English uh, speakers as well. So yeah, we can do it. Definitely. Uh, look, John, if, uh, if people want to uh, keep in touch with you, see what you, uh, what you get on to, and yeah, definitely see when GiveUp gets back up. Um, how oh, can I miss you that? Well, they can always find me on LinkedIn, for sure. And Twitter, I'm after the, the Sourcing Summit Challenge, I decided to become I Am Sourcer, because we had to chase him. <laughs> um, so that's me again on, on Twitter. And yeah, I think those are the two main, main uh, channels. Brilliant. I'll be happy to share stuff. Thank you very much. Sounds very good. Mm, thank you for, for inviting me, Mark. If you like this episode, please consider sharing it or any of the other episodes with a friend or a colleague who might be interested as well. And consider subscribing to the channel, which will help us meet more people um, and grow the community.